<laughs> Welcome to another segment of Vets Remembered. I'm Craig Yamaluchi, your host, and I have with me today a, uh, a gentleman who was in the United States Navy, Seabees. And this is the very first uh, Seabee I have ever met. <laughs> and sir, if you will please introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is Richard Freitag. I live here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and I'm a lifelong resident of Eau Claire. And uh, how long did you spend in the United States Navy? 18 months, 20 days, 9 hours, and 36 minutes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that, that You got that down to a science. It, it sounds like something you really didn't appreciate too much. Oh, no, I enlisted, um, but after Vietnam, I had, uh, I had had enough, and it was time for me to uh, move on. And uh, I was glad I served, but I was glad to get out. Well, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, when you were in uh, the Seabees, uh, what was your main job in the Seabees? Well, if, if you don't mind, we'll go back and let's do this, Craig. Uh, during Vietnam, it was decided to build up the number of personnel in Vietnam, and what happened, the Navy reinstituted the basic program under which the Seabees were formed during World War II, that being they were looking for construction professionals that they could give some basic military training to and they wouldn't have to train them in their job specialty they could just get them over into Vietnam and put them to work I happen to be a heavy equipment operator and a heavy truck driver but uh, all of the trades were represented all of the building trades um, masons electricians plumbers carpenters cement finishers bricklayers all of those trades were represented and and as a matter of fact, I went into the Seabees as a uh, Petty Officer Third Class, which is the E-4 pay grade. Now, I was 18 years old at the time, and so I went in as an E-4 Petty Officer because I knew how to operate heavy equipment and drive trucks. Wow. That's impressive. It was nice. <laughs> I bet it was. Uh, you didn't have to go through all the rhetoric that normally the other uh, so, uh, sailors would have had to. Well, yes. Um, normally, a, a, a young person would go through uh, basic training or boot camp in the Navy and then go to uh, a trade school to learn to, in my case, operate heavy machinery or to become an electrician or become a plumber. But mm -hmm. for those of us in this, uh, it was called the Direct Procurement Petty Officer Program, and uh, you could go in uh, anywhere from an E-4 uh, Petty Officer Third Class up to an E-7 Petty Officer Chief, um, depending on your numbers of, of years in the various trades. So I served with some Chief Petty Officers with no hash marks on their sleeve because they had never been in the Navy before, but yet they had been in the trades long enough that they went in as an E-7. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now that is something, especially if they don't have to spend all that money and time training uh, the personnel. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you went to Vietnam, what year was that? I uh, arrived in Vietnam in uh, late March of 1969, and I was there until late March of 1970. So I did a, I think it was eight hours short of a full year in Vietnam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, most of the most of the guys I know uh, had uh, the ones that made it all the way, uh, and what I was doing were there for uh, 13 months and 14 days, and uh, <laughs> and that that was you know that was the requirement. Now there were some that only required exactly 12 months, but uh, uh, those are the the people I didn't know, but I did hear that uh, they served only the 12 months. Well, what was I've always said. My time in the Navy was one of the biggest breaks of my life because at the time that I joined the Navy, and I was 18 years old, uh, I went in at, I went to uh, boot camp at the age of 18 months, or 18 years and three months old. And while I was in Vietnam, uh, uh, there was a change in administration. Uh, Nixon, President Nixon ran on a, a political uh, ticket saying that he was going to shut down the Vietnam War. So anyway, the direct procurement petty officer program, you had to enlist for 
30 months of active duty. And the reason for that was is that if you were stationed with a mobile construction battalion, uh, the mobile construction battalions rotated in and out of Vietnam every eight months. And uh, this would have given you two eight-month rotations in Vietnam. I did not get sent to a mobile construction battalion. Rather, I got sent to the naval support activity at Da Nang, which was a one-year tour. Now, interestingly, um, during the time I was over there, there was a, a change in policy, and the, uh, they were trying to wind the war down a little bit. And so it was announced to naval personnel, if you have less than one year of active duty to serve at such time as you get back to the United States of America, you will be discharged from active duty. Now, I've been in the Navy for a little over six months. That's my time at Gulfport, Mississippi, taking my basic training. Then I was stationed out at the Naval Amphibious Base at Coronado, California, where they train the SEALs. Um, so, and I went home for leave. I've had, got a year tour over in Vietnam. Now, a 30-month hitch. I've served 18 months and 20 days. The 20 days qualifies me for the early out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was an honorably discharged Vietnam veteran at the ripe old age of 19 years and nine months old. I was done, finished, out, home, military service completed, and... And then the other beautiful thing, in order to qualify for the GI Bill benefits, you had to have uh, 18 months of uh, active service in. Ah, that would be me. I've got an extra 20 days. So it, it just worked perfect. God loves you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that, that is the, actually the luckiest story I have heard <laughs> on a positive note. Uh, that is just phenomenal. And, and <laughs> How could anybody ever forget that kind of a <laughs> comment? I, Biggest I just, break of my life. <laughs> had to, had to. Uh, <laughs> when, when you were in country uh, uh, Southeast Asia, what did you do there uh, exactly? Well, my first, um, my first uh, nine months there, I was a heavy truck driver. I drove uh, everything from five-ton trucks to uh, semi tractor trailer rigs and uh, my dad had been a contractor here in Eau Claire and he saw to it that in my youth I learned how to operate heavy machinery and drive heavy trucks so I mean I was right at home uh, driving trucks and I was in a, a division there called the fuel and water division and we uh, we handled the petroleum products in uh, in i -Corps, the northern quadrant of the country and then we uh, were in charge of the um, drinking water and the non-drinking water because all if you you remember all the water had to be treated because it mm -hmm. was so foul so for drinking water we we had we had one uh, tractor trailer trailer rig running 24 hours a day just hauling water to the navy hospital there in Da Nang but mm -hmm. we had two uh, 42 foot long five fifty five hundred gallon tankers behind this one tractor and that thing just all day and all night long hauled water to the hospital. It was the only way to get it there. What kind of uh, the storage tanks did that hospital have? Was oh, it was great big steel tanks. Was. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. It was right on the south side of Da Nang, out toward the Marble Mountains, if you've oh. ever been there. Never have. Okay. No, not in that region. Uh, the United States Army was... Uh, they believed in mud holes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> muddy hills, and, and uh, they loved the jungle for some reason. I don't know why, but they did. It seemed like the Marine Corps and Navy actually had uh, some of the best base camps I have ever heard of, <laughs> and uh, especially China Beach. 